everybody and thank you once again for joining me for another deck tech video in this video i'm going to recover some of the boros concepts that we learned from guilds of ravnica updated for ravnica allegiance there's only a couple of cards i would throw in there from the new set but i still wanted to cover it anyway plus somebody brought up the uh some of the audio issues i had in the first video so i wanted to make that right as well my name is justice my handle is arcantuna please remember to subscribe give me a thumbs up on the video i do appreciate that kind of stuff and let's get into the deck tech so Boros, right, is red and white. It says aggro on here. Most of my decks say aggro, but, uh, you know, whatever, it's fine. It's more like a mid-rangey kind of a Boros deck, because I don't want it to burn out too fast, and I do have some pretty big creatures in there with the, the thought of hopefully surviving later in the game. So take a look at the deck tech. I've got four Healer's Hawks, and now this is in the main board. I am going to cover the sideboard, because I do want to do a game in best of ones and best of threes. Um... So run four healers hawk. It's one one for one flying lifelink. I like the flying uh, because you can sneak in for that one and get the lifelink in there, and it's a great creature to mentor. I run two integrity interventions. The integrity side gives a creature plus two plus two. This is a cool uh, pre-combat trick. If you do it during combat, it's too late for a mentor. But if you do it before combat, you can get a mentor of creature to mentor a bigger creature. It works out really well. Uh, and then I'd run. The intervention, if you need the three damage in a pinch, you can do three and gain three life. It's kind of a nice swing, uh, but I hardly ever use that side. It's mostly an integrity card. Two lightning strikes, good old two for three, two mana for three damage, works out pretty well. Uh, four Boros Challengers, so a red and a white for a two three with Mentor, and he can do plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's a great card. It's a great card all around. Um, four of. Three Justice Strikes, a red and a white target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power, so it's only creature removal. Now the funny thing is, I, I, had I known this card was coming out, I would have called this channel Justice Strike after after me, like that's 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 my name right there. Uh, but I made this channel like right around Core 19, didn't know this card would be a thing, but whatever, it's fine, it's all it's all good, no big deal. Uh, I would sub this out in best of threes, and I will I'll teach you guys how I do best of threes anyway. Maybe it's not the perfect way to do it, but at least what I do for it. I run four Swift Blade Vindicators. Terrific card. A red and a white. A 1-1 one, one, Double Strike Vigilance Trample. Uh, really a superb threat, and they remove it often, but uh, there's ways to bring them back, which is uh, kind of nice. I run four Light Up the Stages. This is a great card draw for red. I think it's one of the better card draw cards that red has. I do have Risk Factor, you can see there too. But I like Light Up the Stage a bit more in terms of just raw card draw abilities because you get those two cards, your opponent can see them coming, and a lot of times uh, that kind of spells certain doom. <laughs> so you guys know what I'm talking about, right? When you get Light Up the Stage and it's like two kill cards, and you're like, well... There goes that, and then you just wait a turn, and then you can you can pull them off, which is awesome, especially with if you can get it for the spectacle cost of one red, it's great. Um, I do run two risk factors, and I like risk factor because a lot of times it's three for four, and it jump starts. And so once you have in this deck like five mana, you just jump start it again, go to town, they'll take four, and then you'll get to draw three cards anyway. It's really nice. I like risk factor a lot. I run two Tajiks, three casting, three two with haste mentor. He also prevents all combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. A lot of your opponents will forget about this and do uh, Fiery Cannonade, Deafening Clarion, something that does damage, and then only Tajik dies. And they go, wait, what happened? Well, he prevented all that damage. And they don't take the damage. It's They take zero damage, and then, and then the damage resolves. Tajik dies, nobody else dies. It's really awesome. And for one red and one white, he will gain first strike until the end of the turn. Which is also pretty cool if you're trying to keep his ass alive. But on turn, when he comes out on turn three, that ain't, ain't gonna happen. He'll just die. <laughs> but he's too big of a threat. They will always block down Tajik and they'll lose a creature to him every time. I run one Ajani, Adversary of Tyrants. He's pretty good in this deck uh, because his first two abilities will go off on virtually every creature. There's 12 creatures that you can return for his minus two loyalty ability. And plus, he's only a forecasting planeswalker. He comes out with a four loyalty, and his plus one is to put a counter on each of up to two creatures, which is really nice if you're mentoring. So sometimes you'll have, like, if you have two Boros Challengers out, you can put a plus one, plus one counter on only one creature and then let the mentor start happening. Or you can do, you know, you can do them both, and then you can pump a challenger. Like, even if you just have two Boros Challengers, this will work wonders. It's really nice. I do run two Aurelias. 
forecasting two five flying mentor at the beginning of combat you can put a plus two plus oh uh give none on the counter but give a creature plus two plus oh till end of turn if it's red it gets trample and if it's white it gets vigilance if it's red and white it gets both of those things right so it's a really strong ability and plus she mentors so on the first turn she comes out you can give another creature plus two plus oh and if that creature has mentor it's like a like a nice spiral in the right direction for us uh, it's very strong big removal target so she will get she will get punched pretty good there but uh you know that happens that's all right it's all right it's part of the game it's just nice to have her in there because she goes off sometimes and it's like you can't beat it um i run four heroic reinforcements i've seen decks that run less but i like to run four because this card is so strong um you know for four mana you create two creatures two one one soldier tokens and then until end of turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one in haste. So if you have, uh, like, like say you have six mana, you can drop a Swift Blade Vindicator and then do heroic reinforcements. Um, that probably wouldn't happen ever, but you could if you had six mana. Uh, you know, and that's how the game was playing out for you. Or like, you know, you've got on the fifth turn, you risk factor and they let you draw and you draw into heroic reinforcements and a Swift Blade Vindicator. You'd save until next turn, drop them both. And then that would be a pretty nasty punch in the face. It would be that'd be awesome. Uh, and I also run two Lyra Dawnbringers, so five casting, five five flying, first strike, and life link. And other angels you control get plus one plus one, and also have life link. Um, very strong. And I, not a lot of Boros decks run Lyra, but I like to throw Lyra in there as a way to save my skin later in the game, just because a lot can happen. And she is a terrific blocker. She's got first strike, she flies, and she life links. Um, so even if you're racing, you can attack, and if they don't have an answer, you will also gain that five life back. If you have Aurelia down and Lyra down, um, you can use Aurelia's ability on Lyra, and then Lyra gains Vigilance, and then it's really, really bad. Because uh, then she attacks for seven with Vigilance flying first strike and life link. It's pretty awesome. It's really awesome. Uh, I run eight planes, seven mountains. I run four Boros Guild Gates. Now I wouldn't. I would do eight Clifftop or four Clifftop retreats and four Sacred Foundries. Like eight total dual lands only. I just don't have them, so I'm a little low on wild cards right now. If you have the wild cards for Clifftop retreat and Sacred Foundry, go for it. I do not, so I run four Boros Guild Gates. I don't mind it so much. It does slow me down, uh, noticeably so. You might see that in one of the games we play here in a few minutes. Um, but I, I don't have a choice. So it's a risk I'm taking and running a two-color deck in the ladder, but uh, I think it's worth it. And the other thing that I want to show you guys is the sideboard. So when I sideboard, I plan for pretty much two deck types, two and a half deck types, control and aggro. And the half deck type in there is like a mid-range kind of a deck type. So I, I like Lava Coil as a means of having some extra creature removal if I'm running into aggro or... Um, or like a mid-range type of deck. So I would, like, the initial Lava Coil targets that come to mind are like the Drakes. Enigma Drake, Crackling Drake, Rekindling Phoenix, um, Arc Light Phoenix would be a good one. There's a few white creatures that I would that I would Lava Coil, like the, the Venerated Luxodon, or perhaps even uh, like a Benelish Marshall if it's mono white. If it's mono blue, I would Lava Coil down the... Um, the Tempest of Gins. So they, those are my, like, that's what I'm thinking when I think, okay, well, I might want Lava Coil instead of another card in there. Although I do have plenty of removal. So it, it, it depends on how the, the game plays out. I like Unbreakable Formation against a creatureless control deck. I would take out Justice Strike and some other, like, creature removal spells and throw an Unbreakable Formation because this benefits only me. Uh, I don't have to worry about whether or not they can block. I just Unbreakable and go to town. So that's kind of nice to have that in the sideboard versus the main board in this deck. And also Conclave Tribunal. If they're playing a Planeswalker that's awfully pesky, I will sub this in instead of Creature Removal, right? Does that kind of make sense how I would sub out if they're not playing Creatures? I would take the Creature Removal out and then add some of this stuff that removes more than just Creatures. And against Control, my favorite card is Banefire because they can't stop it. It just happens to them. It's great. I like to Banefire Control decks, uh, especially if, uh, if it's a close game against control and a lot of them are in best of threes this tends to bring home the victory so let's do a couple of games i'll do one game in best of ones in the ladder so you guys can kind of see how that goes it is awfully janky it is what it is and and my advice is if you're going to play in the ladder play best of threes 
best of ones is Hearthstone, and it just gets kind of dull and boring, and you'll pull your hair out. It's wins and losses and wins and losses. It is, it is every bit as maddening as, as uh, just a bad game all around. Um, but best of threes is different, and maybe we'll see that, maybe we won't. This might be an easy victory for us, and then best of threes we'll lose. Um, you never know. We'll take. Well, I like this hand though. I'm gonna keep this hand. Um, we'll see though, because this could be. Yeah, this is gonna be Esper Control, and that's the other thing you've probably noticed in best of ones. It's always the same, like two or three decks that you're playing against. Here comes Thought Erasure. It's amazing how I can do this. This is best of ones. This is life for us in best of ones. Uh, I'm going to lightning strike him because I know he's not playing any creatures. So there's no harm in just throwing the lightning strike out there. Now, actually, it would trigger spectacle. So maybe I want to keep it. But I'm going to risk factor and then I'm going to discard justice strike to risk factor because I know he's not playing creatures. So there's no point in saving the justice strike. Um, of course, this guy is going to surprise me and play like Doom Whisper or something later on. But we, we will see. Um, in either case, I don't think we can beat this deck with this setup happening. We don't have any creatures. He could drop another Thought Erasure. He could drop a... Hopefully he plays a creature. Oh, he's got red in there. Okay, so... Gr Grixis Control or whatever. He's got... Uh, uh, Nicol Bolas in there. So we know he's probably going to be playing... At least a couple counter spells. And this is a deck I would sideboard lava coils into this deck just to handle him when he comes out. Yeah, there's a syncopate, so I thought. It's a nice way to handle that risk factor, too. Alright, so I'm gonna light up the stage for retail here. And I'm gonna hope hopefully I'm gonna draw out a counter spell. So I really don't want him to counterspell Heroic Reinforcements. Okay. Although if he does play Nikki B, I could Justice Strike him. That would work. Guildgate comes into play tapped. If I... Reinforcements... And he counterspells it, I can't light up the stage. And I think I want to light up the stage instead. Or risk getting this spell countered as well. But we will see what he's got. Oh, it's two lands. Okay, see, and that's a good... I'm actually kind of happy to get rid of these two mountains now that they're out of the way. Maybe we can actually do something. I'm going to hang on to this guild gate just in case he does play uh, Nicol Bolas. Because I don't want that to get countered. Yeah, I'm going to go with Boros Challenger. Oh, boy. So I'm going to pay the two life. And then now we're going to draw out the counter spell. Here it comes. Without a doubt, this gets countered. There's no way he lets this fly. That's what I thought. I don't mind losing those mountains. They weren't doing much. He lava coils. This is a strange deck. Okay, it's a lot of removal, a lot of counter spells. I'll just play a mountain here. And again, wouldn't it be nice to get another crack at a deck like this one where he can probably control this whole game? I'm surprised we haven't seen any card draw yet from him, though. He's really looking for some of that card draw. Okay, so he really needs... He didn't have a counter spell for light up the stage. Maybe he doesn't have one for Aurelia either. Perfect. Then again, I'm going to hang on to this land, so just in case he plays Nicol Bolas. Okay, the devil. How cute. Just in case he makes me discard a card of my choosing, I will choose the guild gate instead of... Okay, there goes Justice Strike. Now, here's here's a tip I've learned over the, the months of playing in this, this format. He can see this guild gate, so I'm going to play it. And I'm going to keep this mountain in my hand, and hopefully he doesn't realize it's just a mountain. Although the interface just told him it was a mountain. If he's really paying attention, he will know my timing by now. And he will have figured out that I play cards quickly. Um, and then I take my time clicking, like, clicking the buttons. 
So he might have realized this is a mountain because the interface auto skips your steps for you because it's a very polite interface. He at least knows it's not an instant or sorcery. There's Cry of the Carnarium. Had a feeling that was coming soon. And I'm going to hang on to them both. If he's got another Thought Erasure, he will pick... There's the Chemistry's Insight. He will pick uh, Justice Strike, and then he will see that it's a mountain. And then he will know that I hold one land. We have an 8-point Banefire here if we're playing in the sideboard, which would be really nice. What did, he, what did he discard for that? A land, a gate, yeah. If he doesn't have a counter spell, I don't want him to draw one. If he's got one, he's got one, and he'll just counter it anyways. Okay, didn't have one. Gets to draw a card. Still makes me wish I had my other Justice Strike now, but he made me get rid of it. Oh well. Let's see what we're on here. He's doing... Uh, and if you're going to play best of ones, I think control does give you a better a better chance at winning. Uh, it's just... It's just infuriating. I wonder what card name he's choosing. He's got to type it in first. Lyra Dawnbringer. Okay. There's only two of them. That's fine. Boy. Land, land, land. There's nothing I hate more than drawing land. It's an instant speed, so I don't have to play it if I don't want to. on this jerk over here and hopefully I draw a Tajik with haste and I can punch him in his face. If I draw anything but Tajik, it is worthless because um, well, and here it goes. So I've got a Swifty and Heroic Reinforcements. We're going to send one creature this way and these two guys this way. So there it happened. We had six mana. We were able to do a Swift Blade Vindicator, and to, now let's see what happens. Moment of Craving. Perfect. So at least he can't gain control of my dudes. No fire, no steel. We will. Let's get rid of this guy for good. That's three damage there. I do not want him taking control of my creatures and making them disappear. We're sitting on five damage here. Any any burn helps us with the... Oh, boy. Of course. That's tricky. So he's going to draw two cards. He's going to kill all my creatures. Okay, that's the game. So Niv-Mizzet kills us. Control until you get Niv Mizzet on the board, and then you beat you beat little uh, little one ones all day long. Pew pew. He's killed Lyra Dawnbringer. Man, that was it too. This was such a lucky pull for him. So that's the game. Dang. I should probably save that just in case I draw into another burn for Niv Mizzet. But the game's over at this point. He's gonna draw too many cards. He's got Escanto the Sunken Ruins. I cannot win. And if he's good, he'll be able to kill me this turn. Uh, Niv-Mizzet is definitely capable of doing 17 damage in one turn. Yeah, this will do three more. The Sunken Ruin is not card draw, according to Niv-Mizzet. It's looking at cards and putting one into your hand, so that doesn't, doesn't exactly do it. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, chemisters, go for it.
Lightning Strike's a good one. Yeah. It's four, four damage. If you got another Lightning Strike, that's the game. Chemisters nine, eight, seven, right? Six. So it's it's one damage for casting the spell, and then one for each of the two cards you draw. Right, so I'll be at six, and then any spell that he casts wins him the game. Any single spell. It can be an opt. It could be a... Uh, anything. This is highly unwise of him. To l If I draw into heroic reinforcements, I can win the game if he doesn't have a counter spell. I gotta think he's got a counter spell, but I'm gonna play this out for one more turn. Well, there he goes. Yeah, so that's the game. Uh, yeah, there he goes. So, that's best of ones. It is every bit as infuriating as that. Game after game after game, and it's just you get punched in the face repeatedly, and it's not very fun. Let's do some best of threes now, and let's see uh, if we can spot some differences right away. Like, initially, uh, in that game, I would have conceded real quick, because I don't want to waste too much time in best of threes. And and I wonder if this uh, this Boros deck may, may not be as competitive as I'm hoping for. Um, and, and here's the other thing. My opponent is choosing who plays first. If I lose this game, I go first. And I like how the icons are like... Obviously, the default icon is uh, Vivian Reed. It's pretty funny. Yeah, we'll hang on to it. We'll see what we're playing against. Okay, the Fiend. We'll do a mountain. That was stupid. <laughs> we'll do a mountain and a... No, we can't do a hawk. That's not a red. I meant planes, but whatever. Okay, so we got some aggro happening. We'll do a hawk. He's got shocks in here. Yep, so he sacks him, does two damage to me, and then one damage to my healer's hawk. Exmati, he discards. Cutter bones. Draws a card. Okay, I want to go... I'm going to go planes here, light up the stage just for, for giggles. Okay, cool. We'll cast this heroic reinforcements. We'll let Swifty go. Well, this uh, this is too much aggro to deal with right away. Unless he's on the mana screw train at the moment, then we'll just do heroic reinforcements and then double block like Fireblade Artist if we let if they get to live. Looks like he's only on two lands, which isn't isn't terrible. All right, we'll do Clifftop Retreat. We'll do heroic reinforcements, and we'll hold them. Because I can't be attacking. He casted down one of my tokens. Ooh. Alright, alright, so he, get, he gets away with game one. And this deck might beat our deck also, but, uh... I mean, all the time, but that's okay. That's okay. So let's get into our sideboard. Uh, I like the idea of Lava Coil over some of my more expensive cards here. So we're not ever going to cast Lyra in this game. We can pretty much count on that, right? These games are designed to end quickly, especially for, for this opponent that we're facing. I like a Johnny because he will bring creatures back, but I, I think Risk Factor is going to be too slow for us. So let's go with four Lava Coils. And we will go with, uh, we'll remove Lyra at the, in the five casting space. Because I don't think we're ever going to get Lyra off. And then we'll take out the risk factors. Because again, I think it's too slow. On turn three or turn whatever, we could cast a risk factor. It won't, won't do a darn thing. This guy's playing super aggro. And these cards are just, are going to be a little too slow. Especially if we draw Lyra turn one. Or in our opening hand. But if I get a lava coil in my opening hand, we could be in business by just removing some of the some of the crap he's got. Even if you lava coil a footlight fiend, it won't trigger its uh its uh you know on death when it dies ability. Or Judith, you know, lava coil Judith on out of there. We'll play first, thank you. Here we go. We're in business. I wonder if he's sideboarded in, like, uh, not duress. I hope not duress. Well, even duress would be able to remove a lava coil. 
But this is why we do best of threes. Now we get a chance to think about what we're doing, to play an appropriate card that will kill gutter bones every time. He may choose to block Tajik with gutter bones, or with, yeah, with gutter bones, a lava coil. So he's doing what I'm doing, he's lava coiling people. Oh, and we're stuck on two. <laughs> Unbelievable. Boy, I sure do hate drawing land. Unless I need land. Here comes a lightning strike. Okay, Judith comes down. That's okay. It's okay. I'll take three more. And then we'll, we'll lava coil Judith, and she won't get her ability because she gets exiled. Exile's different. And for the next three turns, I could just remove... I got another Lava Coil. It's fine. Not Justice Strike. Not yet. Why don't we save him to block? Yep. We'll block of Gutter Bones. We'll have to justice strike the war boss down. Not attack. This is brutal right here. Remember, best of threes is not as infuriating as best of ones until it is. Uh, yeah, let's block gutter bones. He might have, this might be a shock, and he might be trying to shock down my challenger. Gutter bones comes back to his hand, and then he... Does both of them back to his hand, and then he plays a gutter bones. Okay. Hey, there we go. So I am going to Justice Strike, the Footlight Fiend. So he has to do that one damage, hopefully to me. Probably to me. And then we'll do a Healer's Hawk, and we will try and sneak away with some life gain. And use our challenger as a blocker. I can do Tajik next turn if I live that long. Yeah, we'll block Gutter Bones. We'll leave the 1-1. One, one. I can do Tajik, Mentor the Healer's Hawk, and gain 2 life. Right? That's kind of what I'm hoping here. And he plays the Spectacle Cost there. Yeah. Okay. So I have to attack with Tajik to do, to trigger the, uh... Don't want to attack with Boros Challenger, because he doesn't have Vigilance. I don't want to leave myself too exposed. Now I've got a 2-2. Obviously he blocks. That's the right move. Okay. Boy, he sure does have a handful of cards there, doesn't he? Oh my goodness. He deals one, he can't exactly kill a creature, which makes me happy, unless he's got a shock there. <laughs> Angrath, of course. Unbelievable. Well, I finally got enough land to do something. That's fun. It doesn't it doesn't matter. We can grab him. But then he can just Well, he can't just take him again. Whatever. Two three four. Doesn't matter if I block the footlight fiends. Because they will die and then they he will prick me anyways. But if I block the 2-2, two, two, I will live a turn. Oh, there we go. That's game. So we lose, lose, lose. Um, my point was not proven about best of ones versus best of threes, although maybe it just speaks to this Boros deck not being as competitive in the diamond tier as I would like it to be. Um, um, but that's okay. I feel like I kind of got mana screwed a time or two in there. 
I'm going to give it one more game outside of the uh, the ranked arena session just to see if it's uh, if it's something that I'm missing in the deck itself. That could be the case. Could be the case. I don't want to I don't want to leave the deck built like this if it's got some fundamental flaws. That last game was quite quite one-sided there. <laughs> okay. We'll just have two mana the whole time. Unless all we draw is land. It's one or the other. Oh, here's a Johnny the Dark Templar. That's that's encouraging. All right, we go first, and all we have is a Challenger. We'll hang on to it. We'll see what we got going on. Although I did make that play where I played a mountain instead of a plains, and I couldn't play my Healer's Hawk. That was pretty funny. All right, Boros Challenger. Uh, Lightning Strike. Yeah. I could light up the stage if I feel like it. All right, so he's he's got the lightning strike. He just didn't play it for some reason, which was really silly on his part, uh, because now I can play integrity in response to his lightning strike. Oh, maybe he doesn't have one. So we'll light up the stage, and I'll save the integrity in case he does have some burn here. So I know he's got something in there. Maybe it's just a shock, and a shock won't do it. Huh. I wonder what he's holding priority for. In either case, this sort of tells me that this deck probably isn't quite ready for uh, ranked play, because because just the decks that you see in ranked are a little bit better than this. It's a little discouraging. I was hoping to be, hoping it would perform a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of Gutter Snipe. He's too powerful. Sorry, buddy. We will attack for two again, and then we will do light up the stage. Although this is starting to flow like I thought it might. Kind of weird that it, it didn't. I really want to get Tajik down, but he could spoil the party here with uh, with the big blocker. No? Okay. I either play him or lose him, so the decision is pretty easy. Like, I don't have to decide on this. I don't have enough mana to play more than one. So I gotta play either Tajik or, or my Justice Strike and, uh, and go from there. So like, you know, if he... Yeah, let's go. Okay. Well, the deck tends to work a little bit, so he did have a lightning strike, like I thought, but I have integrity, and I want to save him, so I will. And he's going to mentor the challenger, which I like to do, and now I can pump the challenger and mentor Tajik. Or I could do the Ajani trick I was talking about earlier, which, which I think we'll do. I think we're on for that. Although, we're going to have a Wizard's Lightning here, and Tajik's going to die. Yeah. Go for it. Let's have... Yeah, there we go. That's... That's game. Yeah. Yeah, this is... So, here's the beauty of Heroic Reinforcements with a Mentor. <laughs> like, it's not... It's not pretty... Uh, had he not done Sovereign's Bite, he would have died for sure there. Uh, there's there's not a lot he can do. I can I can uh, Justice Strike. Oh, I can't Justice Strike this vampire. He's a 3-4. But I can... This is going to enter tapped. I can Justice Strike this guy. And then I'll attack. Mentor this guy. I like two 2-2s. Two rather than a 1-1 one, one and a 3-3. Three, three. The 3-3 three, three gets blocked out, and I only have him for one. That's game. So he blocks incorrectly and loses. Um, but yeah, so the deck does have some flow to it, which uh, this is kind of what I was expecting in the ranked arena, although there's a little too much uh, competitiveness in in uh, the ranked place, particularly the diamond tier. So um, 
this might flow better with more lands. Like I think the land base could use uh, could use some help there. Um, but other than that, you know, that's kind of how I do it in terms of playing in the arena. Best of threes works out better for me. Generally speaking, it did not in this in this trial run today. But I'm actually more comfortable with games like that. Like if you run into a hyper aggro deck, a, a lot of times you don't run into decks like that. It's it's more like uh, decks that you can handle a little bit better with whatever you're playing so thanks for watching guys i do appreciate it um you know let me know if you have any tips for boros or anything that uh, you've experienced in the arena with this deck or decks like this i would appreciate it thanks so much and have a good time